In this video, we're going to go through two different examples where we find the five number summary and the interquartile range. In the next video, we'll take the five number summaries and turn them into box and whiskers plots, and we'll also have a look then at outliers. So a five number summary allows you to take a whole bunch of numbers, and in a quick snapshot, you're able to find out where the middle of those numbers are, what the range of those numbers are, and you can also see how the data is spread across those numbers. So first of all, whenever you start, you need to make sure that the numbers you have are placed into ascending order. You can see here, all our numbers are out of order, so I'm going to put them into ascending order. So here I've started with 1, that's our lowest value, and I've gone right through until I found our highest number here, which is 9. What we can now do is move on to creating the five number summary. So we've got here L, which is the lowest value, and that's an easy one to get. You just look for the smallest number that you have in that data set. So number 1 goes right here. Then you take your highest value, and we can place that here really easily. Then Q2, that means the middle value. So in this example, we've got 10 numbers. You can count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, a huge mistake a lot of people make is they assume that because you've got 10 numbers, if you want to find the middle number of 10, they cut 10 in half, they get 5, and they go, OK, well, it's going to be the fifth number. So they go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and they grab number 4 right here. They think that that's the middle. Now, if you have a look at what's going on, we've actually got five numbers taking place on the left-hand side and another five numbers taking place on the right. And where's number four? Is that the middle of this data set? It's not. What you need to do is take the left-hand side five numbers and take the right-hand side five numbers, and you have to take into consideration that you've actually got two numbers which are going across that middle right there. So I'll put that in a different color. And we've got 4 and 6, they're both the middle number. So what I'm going to do is get the average of 4 and 6. 4 plus 6 divided by 2, and that gives us the number 5. You can see the middle of 4 and 6 is the number 5. So over here I can put 5 as our median. Now you're going to get two different numbers like this when you have an even amount of numbers. So because we had 10 numbers, if you half 10, you're going to get 5 on the left, 5 on the right, that means you've got to get the average of the two middle ones. If we had an odd amount of numbers, you'll see this in the next example, then it's just going to be one number sitting in there by itself. So there's our median or our Q2 value. So I'm just going to put Q2, took place right here. The next thing we need to do is get Q1. Now Q1 is like getting the left-hand side median. So we've got the median there for the 10 numbers. Now we have to get the median that's occurring on the left-hand side. So you've got this left-hand half over here. So we've got five different numbers going from one to four here. Now where do you think the middle is of these five numbers? Well if we want to cancel out the one there and this four over here, you've got three numbers left over. If we cancel out two and three, you can see that two is sitting there by itself. That's the third number. So you've got five different numbers and the third number is the one that sits in the middle of five different numbers. So I can call that one there Q1. So over here I'm going to put the number two. On the right-hand side, it's a very, very similar thing. We're going to get the median of the right-hand side. So you've got 6, 7, 7, 8, and 9. So if I cross off 6 and 9, that the far left and right-hand numbers, I can cross off 7 and 8. And here, number 7 is sitting there by itself in the middle. So that's Q3. So I'm going to go and put number 7 here as Q3. So now we've got our five-number summary. All we need to do is find the interquartile range. Now the interquartile range simply means how far is the distance between Q3 and Q1. In other words, IQR equals Q3 take away Q1, IQR interquartile range. Now these different Q values, Q1, Q2, Q3, are simply the points where we've broken the data up into the four different quarters. You can see you've got one quarter of the data here, another quarter there, another quarter of the data is there, and your fourth quarter is there. So you find the distance between Q3, Q1. So what we had for Q3 was 7, and Q1 is 2, so 7 take away 2, and our IQR is 5. Our interquartile range is 5. Now, the interquartile range is different to the range. If someone asked you for the range of this data, that means you want to find how far does that data spread from the start to the end. Well, we start at 1, we go right through to 9, so 9 take away 1 is 8. So the range is 9 minus 1, giving you 8. So it's different to the IQR, the interquartile range. 
So we're finding the five number summary for this data set here. First of all, you need to make sure everything is in ascending order. So we've got 12 right through to 37. We're all in order, so we're fine. The next thing we do is we find the value for L. L means the lowest. So the lowest number is 12. H is the highest value. You can see that's 37. Now Q2, that's the next easiest value to find. Q2 means median. So what you need to do is count how many numbers we have because you're going to use that count to find out where the middle is. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 numbers. Now once again, a little warning, don't halve 9 and assume that 4.5 is the middle because if you went for 4.5, half, half of 9 is 4.5, you'd go here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 4.5 four and exists between 17 and 19. You might make a mistake and assume it's somewhere between 17 and 19. That is not the halfway point for these nine numbers. What you need to do is visualize what's taking place here. You can see that we've got four numbers on the left-hand side, and there's another four numbers sitting here on the right-hand side. That's an even spread. We've placed four on the left, four on the right, and you can see we've got one sitting there right right in the middle by itself. That is our median value, our Q2 value. So I'm going to put 19 here. Now that's different to an example where you've got an even amount of numbers. Okay, If you had an even amount, what you find is you've got two numbers that sit in the middle and you have to get the average of those two numbers. But here, because there's an odd amount of numbers, then you can place some on the left, some on the right, and you'll always be left with one value sitting right there in the middle by itself. So there's 19. Now Q1, that means you're finding the left-hand side median value. Now, there's a small trick to this, and that is that because we have this one value sitting there in the middle, we're not going to halve it and go across there to find the middle of these values. You actually ignore that value there in the middle because we can't really halve that. So what we do is we'll just focus on finding the median between these four numbers here. So ignore 19. We've got four different numbers. Where is the middle of four numbers? Well, now we've got an even amount. So we have to actually get the average of the middle two numbers. So you've got here this number on the left-hand side and the number on the right, 12 and 17. We can get rid of those, and we're left with 14 and 15 sitting right here. So that's going to be Q1. And how do we find out where the middle of 14 and 15 is? Well, you can probably see that the middle of 14 and 15 is 14 and a half. But if you're not sure, you just do this. We take 14, we add on 15, and we divide it by 2, or we get the average. So that's 14.5. Over here, that was our Q2 value, and at the moment we're going to find Q3. So 14.5 goes right here. Now Q3, once again, we can get rid of the left and right hand side number. We don't need those. And we'll just count in until we hit the middle two numbers. And you can see right here, 22 and 24, uh, the numbers are going to make up our Q3 value. So how do you find the middle of 22 and 24? Well, if you're not sure, add them together, divide it by 2, and you can see that's going to be 23. So there is 23 for Q3. Now we need to also look at the IQR or the interquartile range. So if you can't remember, we've got Q3 take away Q1. The interquartile range means you're really just looking at the, the spread between Q3 and Q1, those quartiles there. So Q3, we can see that that's 23. And we need to take away 14.5. So 23 take away 14.5 is going to give you 8.5, there's your interquartile range. The last thing we can have a look at quickly is the range itself. What is the range? It's different to the interquartile range. The range is the spread of the entire data set. So how far does it go? Well, you need to take the highest value and then subtract the lowest. So 37 take away 12. You can see that that's going to give us 25.